for them haven't been able to replicate that type of performance but here's a moment Jamaican High School football's own Invincibles ready to move one step closer to the unthinkable last year 15 matches 15 wins on their way to an eighth title they remain unbeaten this year in fact it's been 711 days since Clarendon College's last the Costa Cup defeat December 2, 2017 against Rossi's in the final. It's been 66 days since their only draw in three years. This team really knows only one way, that's to win. Save a moment for McGraw High. It's their first time here, hopefully, having forgotten the 7-0 drubbing by Jamaica College in the Champions Cup. This will not be any easier. They are up against another juggernaut, the most irrepressible of juggernauts. McGraw have their work cut out today. It's Clarendon College versus McGraw High. It's a water the Costa Cup semi-final. Ricardo Chambers and Dwight Jeremiah to help sweeten this treat. Uh, it's, a, it's a big treat here and uh, surprising that we have not seen more in the stands in terms of in way of support for these two teams but I'm pretty sure it will fill up nicely as we progress through the afternoon here. The official party being led by the ISA president Keith Wellington meets first of all the McGraw High team and now the Clarendon College team, guided by their captain, Earl Simpson. <laughs> semi-final day in the Issa Water Da Costa Cup. This is semi-final one. What a moment this must be for McGraw. The officiating party, led by Darren Davey, Now the Clarendon College boys will one by one come face to face with the McGraw High students. The last time we saw, as we said, we saw McGraw out and they conceded so much, too many spaces, didn't hold, get a hold of the football enough. The team that does not pass a lot here up against this Clarendon College team which likes the possession. And for sure McGraw will have to be more disciplined, tracking their players, closing the spaces down. You're going to think it's going to be a lot of work for McGraw today. The coin toss as we complete the formalities. The officiating party led by Darren Davy from Roses Valley in St. Elizabeth. He is assisted by Princess Brown and Melvin Reed with Andre Farkison as the fourth official for this encounter. Clarendon College are back here. They know what it's like to get past this round. Let's look at their lineup. They will employ a 4-3-3 formation. Omar Reed at left back, Jamari Howell at right back, Earl Simpson, the captain, and Adrian King in the central defensive roles. Tajay Williams, Kenroy Stoddart, and Dane Chambers in the middle of the park. Roderick Howell will play left wing up front along with Jalen Larman over on the right. And Smart, Sheldon Smart, expected to come through the middle for the Junior Samuels coached unit. Today you see the 4-3-3 formation, very fluid formation, and one which you expect the front three to not stay be stationary throughout the game, but always changing and giving the defenders always something new to think about. Uh, so we expect them to really possess the football in that formation, the one area that you feel if the wide strikers do not track back, then you have spaces to exploit. Whether Magra can do that, then it's left for us to see later. Lenworth High, the technical director for this Clarendon College team, looking comfortable at this stage. McGraw 
know they have their work cut out for them. They have made four changes from the starting 11 that lost 7-0 to Jamaica College in the Champions Cup on November 2. Anthony Bailey comes in at right back. Eric J Eric Jadu and Akeem Bailey maintain their positions in the centre-back role. Dineth Whitaker is at left-back again. Two changes in midfield. Sakim Green and Javon Reed, the 15-year-old, gets a start. Joining Raheem Ebden and LaShawn Spence. Peter McGregor, their leading goal scorer, is joined up front by Lamar Grant. Well, they play a 4-4-2 formation and in that then you suspect the middle of the park is going to be crucial for them because if not they could have numbers down where three central midfielders for Clarendon College could outnumber the two they have so you suspect the two wide players will have to tuck in once they do not have the football but once they do have it then if they are wide they could exploit the wide space as we spoke about that being the weakness in the 4-3-3 system. Jermaine Thomas is the head coach for McGraw. They're in sky blue and white this afternoon. Darren Davy gets ready to send this semi final on its way. And we're away. McGraw versus Clarendon College in the first semi final of the 2019 Issa Water the Costa Cup competition. Clarendon College, the heavy favorites for this one. It would be a massive upset if somehow, somehow, McGraw High were able to come out on top. I tell you, it would be, as you say, massive square to the square because certainly no one, um, except you feel for those of McGraw who feel like they can get something from this one. Ball given away to LaShawn Spence, trying to get across the edge of the 18-yard area, easily dealt with by the Clarendon College defense. Captain Simpson, now over to Jamari Howell. Howell spreading the ball forward. Stopped in midfield. Be a critical area of the park this afternoon for McGraw High. Very much so because like I said, Clarendon playing a central three and if McGraw's McGuire White players do not tuck in when they do not have the football, then a lot of space will be on the offer for the central three for Clarendon. Jamari Howell goes for the long ball. Dealt with once and dealt with twice. But Clarendon College will come again. Looking for the early goal and produces an early save. David Chambers with the shot. If you Chambers should have gone a little bit, holding his body a little bit more and go for the far, far side. Uh, just a team effort here from Chambers. Still made the goalkeeper work, but he felt he could have done better with that opportunity. Carlos Robinson pushing it behind for a corner kick, the first of the contest. And the Clarendon College making their intentions known quite early in this semi-final. Pretty much the direction you expect most of the traffic to be going today. Corner kick for Clarendon College comes to the near post. Glancing header is wide of the target and over the top. And again, we saw earlier what created this chance for Clarendon College is that McGrath, they do not protect and use that football as much as possible. They're looking to get it forward uh, as quick as possible, but they need some more possession of it. That's something that Coach Thomas will have to work out today. Granville for Smart back into the center ball given away to Ebdem who was uncertain what he wanted to do with the football and Clarendon College get it right back Chambers settles things down David Chambers pushed off the football by Peter McGregor He's a big lad, you feel any touch is never going to be gentle from him. But for McGregor too, what's going to be critical today is who's going to supply the assist, the service to him, because he's going to need that today. 
spoke about the fact that McGrath don't mind not having the football. Here is a ball over the top. Larman picks it up. Larman gets inside the box. Well dealt with. Now with Howell. Runs out of space and it's a throw for the McGrath team. You're correct with that. They may not like to have the football, but they're going to have to do a lot better than the last time in terms of organization when they don't have it, keeping their shape, tracking their markers. Critical for them, they don't concede early. You want to see if you can get some frustration creeping into the Clarendon College unit. Here they come again. And that's a good thing for my guy in terms of wanting to, would love to do that because they have lot, they have won a lot of games by a goal to nil. So if they can manage to frustrate this Clarendon College team today, it's a big ass, but it's a game of football. They all have the same chances when the game started today, you feel. My guy will think so. Here's the captain, Earl Simpson. Howell Chambers back to Simpson and so far we are seeing that from McGrath in terms of the wide players coming in we're seeing where they're trying to code it out in the middle of the park there for Clarendon College not making it easy for them to penetrate and to go forward transition from defense into attack not made easy by the organization of McGrath so far Clarendon we know they can move this ball a lot quicker we suspect they're gonna have to do that as this game progress King now McGrath shaping up well with their defensive formation at least for now Simpson Decides to go for the long ball again, almost forced into that. It was ill-directed, will be a throw. Definitely not almost, definitely forced into that. You see without the ball, McGrath gone to a 4-4, 1-1. Four, four, one, one. The wide players tucking in, so they have two banks of four. Just that striker applying that pressure higher up. There were suggestions that the moment got to them in the Champions Cup first round against Jamaica College playing at the National Stadium against a team that they would have seen year in, year out on television dominating. And they just didn't handle that moment well. But with that experience, they would want to do a lot better here this afternoon. You're right about that, Ricardo, most certainly. That's what we talk about experience. Some say history has nothing to do with the present game, but most certainly that experience would have helped. King. Oh, given away to Raheem Ebdem. They're trying to come forward, looking to squeeze it through for Limari Grant. Now over on the left with LaShawn Spence. Spence has company and no support. Decides to try and win a corner. He wins a throw. I think that lack of support is coming from the fact that McGrath possibly don't want to overcommit, knowing that that will open up space. It could be hit on the counter by this slick passing Clarendon College team. Dinath Whitaker with the throw will look to go long. Prince Daniel Smith in goal, does well for Clarendon College and he wanted to send his attackers forward but no one was moving into position and he was a little bit disappointed with that. And he should be disappointed because what it does, because they did not show themselves offer for that pass from him, he, he had low McGrath to settle and get back into their shape. Peter McGregor now for McGrath, sends the ball forward. Cut out. They win it back. Slipped forward for Lemari Grant. He ran into some traffic. 
There is Raheem Emdem, the number 11. In his third season of playing the Dacosta Cup, the 17-year-old. He has a lot of work to do today to organize this midfield for McGrath. So far, Clarendon College not been able to exert their usual dominance on their opponent, McGrath. And that's all about organization and work rate for McGrath. You feel if they were to get an early goal, McGrath would play right into their hands because we've heard of a lot of cases where they've won games by a goal to nil come pretty early in games and, and they sit in and they defend it's never easy to get past 11 players when they get behind the football if it's one thing Clarendon College as you look at McGregor coming forward since a, a cross inside I presume it was a cross whatever what was sure was that there was not enough support in the box for that ball that was played in by McGregor I don't think you're going to see that change pretty soon for McGrath because, as I said, they're mindful of committing too much forward. Another long ball over the top. That was good tracking by Whitaker, and that's one of the things that they're going to have to do today. McGrath, they're going to have to track well. And that occasion, well done by Whitaker. Denath Whitaker. Such an outstanding performer for McGraw High. He's going to have to bring that game here today, for sure. McGraw winning those midfield battles so far. And not having played since the 7th of uh, November, as we said earlier, 2nd of November, sorry, they would have been freshed. Yes, some people will argue about match rustiness but as the coach said earlier squad games and intense drills would have kept them sharp and you feel they would have been well rested too to be able to cover the grounds that they will require today Clarendon College have been ruthless in recent the Costa Cup matches 25 goals in their last five matches 17 in the quarterfinal round of the competition they know how to score goals when you look at their record in the last couple of seasons as well you realize how prolific they have been in front of goal you look at the starting 11 today and you and that, that's a good indication as you pointed out Ricardo that what all of 10 9 of the outfield players have scored this season So they know goal is all over the team for Clarendon College. Here is McGraw coming forward. It's good work there by Howell. He had to get his body positioning well in terms of turning that out for a throw in. Running back like that could have gone. Not positioned well, could have gone over the goal or towards the goal line area. You get the feeling Clarendon not up to the slick passing in terms of the speed at which they're doing so, so far in this game. Uh, a bit into the hands of McGrath where it's, it's a bit slow, not penetrative enough. But again, as we said earlier, a lot of that have to do with the fact that McGrath, they have organized themselves really well in this first 13 minutes of this encounter. Expectant Clarendon College fans, as usual, a few Cornwall College fans have come in early. You will see a lot more of them for the second semi-final against Dintil Technical. Yeah, that's when we expect those to be packed. King for his captain Simpson again, who will try to start an attack. And they win a free kick. And you spoke about the Cornwall College supporters in the stand. I mean, they have a small matter of dealing with Clarendon College in the Champions Cup. They'll be looking out and thinking what they've seen so far. Nothing to scare them that much at the moment.
just struggling to bypass this Magra midfield as the captain again. Once again intercepted by Magra in the middle of the park. Again, as I said, not fast enough in moving. You suspect they're going to have to move it quicker and then also look to switch the point of attack as quickly as possible as Magra shift to cover the active side of play. Suspect Cannon will have to have players much like that in terms of switching and moving it quicker. Okay, they come forward now with a little bit of space. Williams goes left side. The cross leaves a lot to be desired. It's not a good cross coming in there, but seen where they're trying something different. We saw Boa being pinged from right to left, looking to switch the point of attack and catch McGrath out. And you can see there from coach Hyde, he's trying to get these charges to do a lot more in terms of penetrate this McGrath rear guard. Quarter of an hour gone. McGraw would feel that they have done well so far. Howell with the throw. Simpson. Now trying to start the attack from the right. Once again, that aerial pass not finding the target was looking for Sheldon Smart. He just felt if that one chance that Cannon College got earlier in the game with Chambers, had he really done better with that. And he should know that McGraw would have to change the game plan pretty early. Cannon College with 64% possession so far. Nagar would come in here expecting that, but they would be comfortable because that 64% possession has not been so worrying for Magra. A lot of it, I think, has been in their defensive to midfield area for Clarendon College. It has. Pedestrian start to this semi final in the Issa Water to Costa Cup. Champions have not quite hit their straps yet. Granville. Williams. The king for Howell. Almost fell for Lemari Grant for McGraw. Quite impressed here with the concentration and work rate organization of this McGraw team in this opening, opening minutes here. Peter McGregor rising high there, committing the infringement. There's a failing arm there, watching the player from Camden College. But the way he got about the ground, just showing his strength and power. Peter McGregor, the lead man for McGraw High this season up front. Clarendon College with Larma for Howell. Howell comes under a challenge. And McGraw wins possession of the ball. They're winning most of those 50-50 balls, McGraw. Still tense moments on their bench. Very much the case. And the one time in a long time that we've seen Clan and College get in some numbers in their attacking third. But still amount to nothing. Just too lethargic. Again it goes McGraw's way. It's good pressure from McGraw just now. That's what they're going to have to do. They're going to have to put pressure wherever the football is. 
ensuring that good players are not given time and space. And we know this entire 11 for Clarendon College, they have quality all over the park. And so it's just not one player that McGrath would be concerned with. So far, they have done the business in terms of keeping this Clarendon College team quiet. Nothing about this McGraw performance will be pretty. If that's what you're expecting, you can forget about it. But they will fight Granville for Chambers. Granville again. Slips it through looking for Chambers. Goes down inside the box. Nothing in it. That was good defensive work, good tracking. And we spoke about that earlier. We can't say enough about it. And actually, Sheldon Smart running through on goal just now. Here's another look at it. Dinath Whitaker with the challenge. It's an earlier incident with Peter McGregor. In any case, opportunity for McGrath to go forward. Those set pieces away from, a good distance away from goal, but you feel, again, teams playing against a team that likes to have the possession. A set pieces are going to be critical for them. Omar Reed sending it long. The forward pass is very few, limited at this stage. But you know this Clarendon College team is an experienced team and uh, with it led by an experienced coach. And they will just continue to move it about, be patient. King goes long again, looking for Granville. Granville under pressure from Whitaker once more. Whitaker standing strong. And now an opportunity for them to go forward. McGregor has possession. Slips it right side. Then looking to run into space. Well dealt with at the back initially by Earl Simpson. But McGregor wins it back. Oh, shows his strength again. Two players on him now with Jalen Larman stepping forward to help and winning the throw for Clarendon College. Uh, yes, McGregor there showing good strength on the football. Protected it quite well. Shape again. Shape again. Shape again. And there you hear Coach Thomas talking about and shouting to his players shape. And we, we mentioned that earlier. And we knew that that was going to be critical for them today. He's going to have to consistently remind them of it. I'm pretty sure with the time off that they have had, they've worked this over and over on the training ground. And it becomes muscle memory at this stage, makes it a lot easier. This will be a tactical affair. It has already been. Clarendon College being kept at bay for the first 22 minutes. Already they would have done well, McGrath, because I, I suspect a lot of person would have expect would have expected the scoreline to be different at this stage of the contest. There's a long way to go for McGrath to continue to be concentrated to be continued to uh, run and cover and keep the shape and you know, when you're up against a good team just one lapse in concentration and it can cost you one good thing for McGrath they will know no extra time in the Dacosta Cup semi-final and so if they can manage to hold out it will go directly to penalties Clarendon College coming forward Fortunate for Carlos Robinson in goal. There was no Clarendon College player getting onto the end of that. Granville. You felt that one should have been played back to the penalty spot. There was one player waiting there under zero pressure. Chambers runs into Whitaker, who wins possession. Referee steps in because Robinson is down.
as we saw on the play here. I might have just fallen awkwardly there. Larman with the cross. He felt he had a better option there, Larman. He should have played in Granville. I think Granville was the player on top of the penalty spot there, waiting. Oh, and, and, and there we have it. Confirm. It was Chambers saying he was crying out on top, on top. That's where the pass needed to have gone with that build up. Also showing a little frustration, but you hear the experience in the technical director, Lenworth Hyde. Just keep pressing them. They'll get tired. That's his hope. Yes, we hear him there for sure. Keep the ball. Keep moving it. Exactly. Instructions coming from all corners of the Clarendon College bench. It's been a slow start for them. And you can hear the frustration coming out as well in those in when those instructions were given. And that's credit to McGrath so far. Very frustrated Clarendon College in this opening 25 minutes. This is what they have done to so many teams this season. They are trying to do it again. A lot at stake here, and a lot says, uh, a lot of quarter says McGrath has come into this one with very little pressure on them. The only pressure they would be feeling is the pressure to do themselves proud because not many would be expecting too much. But haven't they done well to this stage? They have done what they needed to do. They've done what they've done, all campaign that is stand strong defensively. I think that was a good free kick to be to have been won there by McGrath because for the first time in a long while in this game that they have committed, they did commit about three players. And so would not have wanted to lose the ball on that occasion because it would have meant they would have been a bit open, not being able to organize or get back in shape as quick as possible. Raheem Ebdem taking down. Now Dinath Whitaker with the free kick. Two falls committed by either side so far. Appeal for handball on McGregor. No success. King for his keeper, Prince Daniel Smith. Simpson for Prince. Studdart. Howell. LaShawn Spence is right there to apply pressure. And McGraw wins possession. McGregor. Looks to go forward by himself, trying to take on two, three, four defenders and wins the free kick in a dangerous position, a position from which he himself has shown some quality already this season. A good drive there from McGregor using his, his, his strength and pushing forward and that was on the back of good combination play from McGregor in midfield. So the use of the football a little bit better this time out and it's paying dividends for them. We spoke about set pieces being critical for them. And this one is closer to goal than the ones we've seen so far in this game. And you feel McGregor is going to have a go at this one. There's only one way this is going to go. He's going to strike it towards goal with tremendous power. If it's on target, it will present problems for Prince Daniel Smith in goal. Here is the shot. It's not on target. Well, it seemed to have taken a deflection and uh, deflected for a corner. That seemed destined to be on, on, on target. I feel like Smith would have had some work to do. Let's look at it again here. Let's go towards the top corner. Came off David Chambers. 
No. Corner kick for McGraw. Javon Reed, the 15 year old with the corner kick. They will have another one. Both Simpson and Chambers got up quite well there, but none of them made contact. And just missed time in their header there. Two McGrath players rose highest, but the vital contact was not made. Javon Reed with another opportunity. Corner kick away from goal and easily dealt with by Clarendon College. No opportunity for them to break. Chambers has to turn it back though. The long ball comes in. Ebdem spreads it wide. Cross coming in. McGraw starting to explore their attacking options a little bit more. Really getting into this game a lot more, McGraw. Last couple of minutes. Three, four, three kicks. Three, three kicks being given. Again, yes. It's clear infringement there by Stoddard. Peter McGregor will be so critical for McGraw today. Free kick, header, wide of the target. Seven goals for Peter McGregor this season. Comes into this as the backbone and the front bone of the McGraw High team. And you can see exactly why he's pretty much everywhere in the first 31 minutes of this semi-final. Here they come again, McGraw. Whitaker battling for it. Fox Pence battling for it, unable to win it on that occasion. Clarendon College now can transition forward. Granville. Can we see McGraw getting back into that 4-4-1-1 shape quite quickly. And you feel Clarendon College just missing an opportunity there also when they defended the corner kick and McGraw had committed a number of players forward. You just get the feel that they needed to transition much quicker from defense to attack Clarendon. Oh, that's a sweet ball through. And a timely challenge to deny the shot going towards goal. Corner kick for Clarendon College, but it could have been a lot more serious. Just losing his footing at the inner opportune time here. And also a good challenge coming in. I tell you what, the McGrath defenders, they're tracking well, they're covering. You feel there was a lot of time for him to get his shot off. There was a lot of distance for the defender to cover. Larman getting through, not able to get the shot off in time. Punched away by Carlos Robinson. And a shot out of frustration maybe coming from Omar Reed well over the top. Trying to spectacular there, but that was just too high. He didn't drop in time. He didn't get over it. So it was always going to go skywards. King. Throw for Larman.
This one slow and methodical. Keeper read that well. And you can see the shifting evident there from McGrath. Left and right. Just good shifting taking place. And they're not stepping forward. They're just okay for them to sit deep. I see a substitution coming up here for McGrath. Number seven going in. Let's see if right. Going out, going out is Stoddart. Sorry. Had it wrong there. It was a Gale, the player going in. And the player coming out there is a green. So Dandy Gale on in the 35th minute. Could be something tactical there from a guy. I didn't see any sign of injury. It, it's also maybe part of a plan to ensure that fresh legs are always on the park with the understanding that Clarendon College may up the ante. And the guns that they're going to have to cover today, McGrath, they have to have fresh legs in there. Omar Reed stands over this free kick for Clarendon College. What can they make from this? Omar Reed floats this one in, easily headed away. It wasn't a very good free kick there from Reed. Didn't get the type of projection he wanted on that one. Long throw inside the box, another header comes. Reed does well to win it. And the instructions are coming. No shortage of them on either bench. Reed with a long throw again. Find that coaches have to do that when you're really trying to do a tactical back inside. Oh, the keeper comes, does well enough. Might have been a, a slight fumble. Now McGregor tears forward for McGraw. Oh, McGregor again is taken down. Now the card will come out this time. Kenroy Studdart shown the first yellow card of this semi final in the 37th minute. You get the feeling that was the only way that Stoddard was going to get to stop McGregor. He's a powerful lad, and even with both arms around him, and even looking to remove his jersey, that almost did not stop McGregor. And hands and feet there being employed by Stoddart to bring McGregor to a halt. His power, his strength, his speed causing some problems for Clarendon College. The problem for him and McGrath is that he's consistently having to pick the ball up so deep that there is enough time almost always for him to eventually be stopped and not in too dangerous a position. And, and that, that, that comes and that's something that they have to give McGrath in terms of keeping their shape and getting players to defend. So you find that your front players at times are drawn back deeper than you'd normally want, but you tend to have to do that when you're up against a, an opponent like Clarendon College. Dan De Gale, the substitute, standing over this free kick. Gale steps up, floats it inside the area. Free kick. Clarendon College, McGregor is down again. Confirmation of the yellow card for Kenroy Studdart. The grandstand filling out nicely here. Still nothing for them to celebrate either side, although for McGrath, a nil or scoreline may well be something to celebrate. Oh, lovely turn by Williams. Clarendon College on the attack. This could be dangerous. Smart just took a year and a half to take the shot. And the ball taken off his boot. 
That takes a deflection and it will be another Clarendon College corner coming up in the 39th minute. What you want from Clarendon College is a sustained period of pressure here and to see how this McGrath team will hold up against it. And this could be the start of that. Good drive into the box there. And yes, the cutback came. But again, McGrath. Dinath Whitaker strong at the back again. Corner kick headed away. Headed further away by McGregor. They've done well so far. Eric Jadu, in his fifth season of playing the Dacosta Cup, this young man wanting to go out on the highest high there is in rural area schoolboy football in the land of wood and water. And isn't his team fighting against the champions? Against the invincibles of Jamaican high school football? against the unbeatable Clarendon College. And against all odds, they are doing well. And you pretty much feel it is the way, one way that McGrath could keep themselves in this one. And the approach tactically by Thomas has proven to be, so far, a masterclass. Howell. Now with Granville. Granville looking to increase the tempo for Clarendon College. And just look at the shape there. There were about four players around Granville. Is there a special moment in the closing stages of the first half? Omar Reed gets it to the top of the box. Granville turns. Smart it was with the shot that was charged down. Not a ball comes in. Granville trying to win it this time. Howell with the cross. Shot goes wide from Smart. That was a good attempt here from Clarendon College. Just couldn't get his body dynamics right. Just needed to open up a little bit more. Can't kick beyond your hips. And that hip was not open up enough to get that one on target. Good cross into the box. And outside the near post, so he needed to be able to wrap himself or that foot around it. Just couldn't get it on target. Just a little more slick and quick with the movement. Clarendon College almost producing an opportunity. And if you heard Coach Hyde early on saying that they just have to be patient, keep moving it about, expecting this McGrath team to tire at some stage. McGregor heads it on, looking for Spence. Spence gets possession of this, but doesn't have much help. LaShawn Spence trying to get around Here's a marker, but no success as the Howell stood strong and smart. And the Sean Spence just not having the skill and quality to dismiss his marker on that occasion. Yes, Howell standing strong, as you said, and with his legs closed and not allowing the ball to go through on that occasion. But you didn't get the movement from the two McGrath players in the box to get into a passing lane. So it's always going to be difficult. It hasn't been spectacular this first half. It's been tactical. It's been what McGraw needed it to be. Would you would you dare to say that Coach Thomas is getting his tactics right here and probably outfoxing the teacher? Still time to go. Lots of it. Williams. Howell. Granville, Chambers attempting the back heel and eventually loses out. That's the face of a man who knows he's under pressure, 
and he was probably feeling it physically as well. Chambers for Smart runs into traffic. Smart is done. Play continues. Smart eventually gets back up. We are approaching half time here in the first semi final of the Issa Water, the Costa Cup for 2019. Has not gone the way many expected it. It's still goalless at the Catherine Hall Stadium in Montego Bay. And there's no doubt in that Magar is the happy of the two teams with this scoreline going into the halftime break. Clarendon College, the team coming off 17 goals in the quarterfinal round, 41 goals in the Da Costa Cup this season alone. Not including their goals in the Champions Cup, but finding a stout defensive performance from McGrath, difficult to break down. Slick movement, Granville gets it back. Could this be the moment? Granville cuts it back across, glorious chance right at the goalkeeper, who parries it away and gets the clearance. Two minutes of time to be added at the end of this first half. Two minutes for McGrath to hold out. Maybe they'll want to do more than hold out. What a glorious chance that was for Clarendon College. What a challenge. Uh, that chance came, fell to a smart hit, got out a very smart save from a Robinson in goal. But a good one too, and that's how you try and break down organization in defense. Quick passing and good movement. That cutback came to smart and brought out a very smart save from Robinson. It was the first touch that probably took the ball away from him and then went right at the goalkeeper. I'm not sure that's exactly what he was looking to do. Well, all of the goal was to the far side, but I think he had to get the shot off quite quickly because he was being closed down. I think that snapshot really helped him in terms of directing it the way he wanted. Larman taken down, free kick for Clarendon College. And who knows, maybe the final play of this first half. This is where you really have to maintain the focus if you're McGraw High. You've done brilliantly in this first half and you don't want to let it go at this stage. We've seen a lot of goals scored just on the brink of half time. And they're gonna have to be concentrated here, first and second ball. They will want to have that. Magra. Chipped inside the box. And now headed away. Peter McGregor goes after it. But he need not do anything more. McGraw have achieved half of what they came here to achieve. They have held the mighty Clarendon College for the first 45 minutes in this the Costa Cup semi-final. Granville, the KFC player to watch, couldn't break through. And at the end of it, a stout defensive effort from McGraw leaves them at 1-1 at nil all at the halftime break. They will make a change at the start of the second half. Kenroy Studart, who was yellow carded in the 37th minute, he's off. And Jaheim Rose coming onto the park, the number six. Well, we'll see what this does for Clarendon College. Ready. Looking to really cut this well-organized team open. 
Second half underway in the first semi-final of the Issa da Costa Cup. Clarendon College with Granville already on the attack. Granville goes down at the top of the box and wins a free kick for Clarendon College. He might have been looking for the penalty. There's no chance of a penalty there. Infringement committed out of the box and you feel he was looking for it. Going down well in advance of that contact. And he might have just bought something there. Seemed to have been going down well before contact was made, Granville. Eric Jadu committing the infringement. Jalen Larman getting ready. Confirmation of the substitution for Clarendon College. Carlos Robinson trying to organize his defense for a testing moment at the start of the second half. Jalen Larman gets ready to take this free kick. And the players setting up the wall seeming slightly uncertain as to where they need to be. Larman looks very certain as to what he wants to do here. Clarendon College, Larman steps up, close to goal, punched onto the crossbar, and then punched in. Clarendon College get the breakthrough at the start of the second half. And from the kickoff, you saw the intentions quite clear from Clarendon. Kickoff straight into the defensive third there for McGrath, going forward. And we spoke about it that they needed to show a more intent, and they certainly did that on that free kick. Good delivery inside there keeper didn't handle it well and the quickest to react was smart a smart move by him and that definitely has given the impetus to Clarendon College and you feel McGrath will have to do something different with this game plan now Sheldon Smart with his 12th goal of the season gives Clarendon College the advantage in semi-final one of the Da Costa Cup for 2019 now it will not be enough for McGrath to just sit back. It's the start of the second half they did not want. Certainly the worst thing they wanted. And but Clarendon showing their intent from kickoff, driving forward. We didn't see a lot of forward pass in the first half. Here they come again, ball over the top, brilliantly kept in by Larman. By Granville it is. Granville. I would dare say though to coach Thomas that he would he, he needs to just keep the shape just the same way. Can't look to open up so early still yet. Uh, not conceding and one goal in it still gives him a chance to hit on the counter. So I don't expect him to change a wholesale change right away in terms of his tactics. I do expect them to still remain organized and try to hit on the counter. It's only one goal in it and one for them and they're back at square with this Clarendon College team. Therese Wright, the number 13 for McGraw, getting ready to come onto the park. Replacing Javon Reed, the 15-year-old. Yeah, a few times in the first half, we saw Reed not showing the composure. Got up field, could have gotten a square in the box, but just hurriedly doing his stuff. So maybe the youngster overwhelmed by the situation here. Clarendon College on the front foot. This is where they love to be. This is where they have been for the last two seasons. Now they can show all the patience in the world and not have to worry because it's McGraw who have to chase this game. Quick passes. Comes through for Granville. Oh, a shot weak and eventually saved should have been 2-0 certainly should have been 2-0 here he got the wrong side of the defender bearing down on goal you expected the net to bulge from that attempt there shot a weak one and just gave time to the defender there it was Bailey to get back and intercept with that good recovery run from Bailey Double block there. Over the top that time. 
applying the pressure Clarendon College stepping up the pace in this second half this is what was expected from the first half just a moment in lapse in concentration there for Magra that really see them going behind just not reacting fast enough in that penalty box when the free kick came in from Larman bringing the changes now Kyle Collins who started in that 7-0 defeat by Jamaica College in the Champions Cup will be making his way onto the park in the 51st minute replacing Raheem Ebdem just wait and see if we see any change in, in shape or for, of this McGrath team with those two a quick substitution in response to the goal conceded being conceded early in this half I feel uh, the quality coach Thomas is he would have come here with a planned plan A and B possibly C as well They haven't shown much, not just in this game, but all season that they can score goals at will. That's been difficult for them. And that's why one of the reasons I don't think they're going to just open up in response to that goal from Clarendon College. Got the feeling they will still stay organized, still stay disciplined, carry on with that tactics because they don't want to let in too much because this Clarendon College team don't give away a lot. And they don't score a lot themselves, McGraw. They come forward, McGraw. The final pass. Not a great one. It's been a fabulous journey for McGraw High. Not many would have given them a shot of being here at the start of the campaign but they are here no, we're not sounding Tajay Williams not pleased about something well, he's, he's complaining that McGregor might have done something he said the number 10 Just a feeling arm there. Good turn by Smart. Bangs it into the side netting. No evidence of that replay. Nothing doing there by McGregor. I just feel that's just a normal action in a situation like that. Coach Hyde can afford a smile now. I think he was doing much of that in the first half. So it will be a corner kick for Clarendon College. They already have the lead, now they look to extend it. Omar Reed with the corner kick. Had a lot of bend. Too much weight as well. Has his work cut out, Coach Thomas. He's going to have to encourage these boys, keep, keep driving them on. Trying to make a quick break with Whitaker. Crowd showing their, you know, having their frustration heard there. I would have felt that it's just all ball. And it looks he got most of the ball there in Whitaker. Not much in it, really. Not a lot in it. it Not a, anything in it. <laughs> was a firm challenge. Um, that replay didn't seem so conclusive. So many Cornell College fans already here. 
Jaim Rose, the substitute back up. College have conceded just five goals in the Da Costa Cup this season. So that gives an impression uh, the task in front of McGrath. That's why they wouldn't want to give up anymore. McGrath, can they find a way? Looking for McGregor, headed on. The goalkeeper alert, getting there, Prince Daniel Smith. McGregor. We see McGregor deep there, looking to be provider. You get the feeling that McGregor would want him to be on the end of at those balls that he's looking to play himself. Janath Whitaker with the throw for McGraw High. Looking for McGregor. was controlled well, but they still maintain possession. With Akeem Bailey, spreads it left to Anthony Bailey. A long ball comes in. And easily dealt with by Prince Daniel Smith again. They've gotten what they wanted and they got it early, so now they are in control, Clarendon College. It's a good timing for that goal for Clarendon, as you said. It takes out the anxiety out of their play. Now they might look to frustrate McGrath High. Oh, the ball is given away here. One right back. That's what McGraw will be looking for, just to get those turnovers and transition as quick as they possibly can. Granville on the ball. Chambers out wide. Reed up in support. Cross. Finding the right boot of Jalen Larman, but unable to direct it towards goal. Just out of his reach there. Good ball switch. Now Peter McGregor has won this one. Now he struggles to get it under control. When he finally does, he has three, four defenders on him. And uh, wins the free kick well that's what he does so well he's a big lad and he held that one up very well there was about three defenders around him still managed to there was that was the only option he had there through the fold i think on that occasion peter mcgregor fighting for his school rose there just coming in just charging in didn't check himself as he reached It's Dineth Whitaker who I think is standing over it. We spoke about the set pieces being a good opportunity for Magar to get into the game. Here they have one dangerous position. In fact, it's LaShawn Spence who is standing over it. The transfer from Spanish Down High in his first season of McGraw. Would love the fact that he's already made it here, but he has an opportunity now to help them back into this semi-final. Spence with a free kick, close towards goal, headed away. 
comes back on to him but loses out. Will have a throw now though. And that's a shot on target there for McGrath. Did not have the venom nor the precision to get past. Hand on college on that occasion. And King with the header out. Whitaker looking for the cross. Acrobatic effort eventually getting in. But well dealt with by the Clarendon College defense. to give Clarendon College credit. It's never easy at any level of this sport when you have 11 players behind the ball as often as you've seen here today to really break them down and get ahead in the game. It has not been one of those flashy semi-final performances or matches. Jadu clears at the back. It was not so flashy, but Highly, very tactical. The McGraw fans have finally arrived in Montego Bay. And maybe a little late in, in, in willing their team on, but it's only a goal in it, and this is the point where McGraw will need them. So often in Jamaica, we see the fans sometimes not getting behind the team when they're down. But McGraw supporters here really doing it. They probably need some more powerful sounds at this stage. But McGraw will take what they can get. Anything will do at this stage. They're down, but they're not out. McGregor does well. McGregor does very well, but as usual, he's going to be under pressure with limited support. And the King had him under control, really. Well, Marshall, dear by King. And we could see there McGraw had one player starting towards the box. The Cornwall College coach, Dr. Dean Weatherly, knows he has an important matchup coming up after this. Dean Till arriving in town. Cornwall College will not be short of support, that's for sure. And you get the feeling too that he's, though he has the immediate uh, task of getting past Dean Till, he'll be having a look at this Clarendon College team because further on in the Champions Cup, he has them in the semi-final. Granville for Clarendon College. Granville to Smart. Comes to Chambers. Good movement from CC. A teasing cross comes in and the keeper does well. He felt that was always too close to the goalkeeper from Chambers. He's needed some curl away from him. Reed wins it in midfield for Chambers. Then Williams loses and wasted ball for McGrath. High. That's where their problem lies. And we spoke about it earlier in the fact that they get so many players behind the ball that when they pick it up, limited option, if any at all, ahead of the football. So a little bit more patience in holding it up and allowing the runners to go ahead of whoever had gain possession in the middle of the park or right, up the field to get in an advanced position so they have options. No matter what happens at the end of this one, McGraw will count this as a successful season, a platform from which they can build hopefully for them towards greater things. Granville. McGraw now away. What can they make of this? They have three going forward. Looking for that defense splitting pass. It was never going to happen from that distance. Needed more weight on it, but already, already you could see that the Clarendon College defenders were mindful of the, the space opening up and slammed it shut as quick as that pass was made. 
intention, yeah. the intention was good though. Six to five minutes have elapsed. Sheldon Smart's 12th goal of the season, making the difference right now. Took them a while to get here. They're here and they're making some noise. Trying to will their team on. Lamar Grant rolls off. Here is the goal for Klein and College. Not reacting quickly enough to the free kick. And Sheldon Smart stepping up to slot home comfortably in the end. Once he got there, he had the goal at his mercy. Smart lad. As I said, but the goalkeeper, maybe you felt could have handled that one a little bit better. Has looked slightly like suspect on a couple of occasions this afternoon. Carlos Robinson in goal and a better goalkeeper might have done a lot better with that. Yeah, it was straight at him and he felt he could have and should have. Held on to that one, but as you give up those spilled ball in the box, this Clarendon College team acts in for trouble. Didn't seem to be struck with tremendous power. Appeals for handball going up. At least in the stands. They will cry for everything. They need a lifeline, McGrath. Clarendon College may want to put this to rest. You know, want to keep McGrath interested for too long. And right with that Ricardo, they saw how difficult it was in all of the first half to try and break this McGrath team down. They don't want it to go back where it's leveling the scoreline and having to work hard again to break the steam down. Now they come forward, Clarendon College. They could really make something of this. They should make something of this. Still in danger land. Don't think that was a smart move there from Smart. Really didn't. He just drove inside, just went across. Williams for Omar Reed. Reed with the cross. Oh, what a brilliant goal! The champions go further clear. They lead by two goals to nil. They deserve that. Certainly deserve that. Uh, they came forward for the first time in a long time. They had numbers up driving forward. But look at this ball into the box. Just a thing of beauty from Reed, and he met it so well. Smart met it so well. Omar Reed taking on the defenders with the cross, and Sheldon Smart with a fine finish, producing his 13th goal of the campaign, his second in this encounter. And the champions can smell the Da Costa Cup final once again. And from this point onwards, you can see Clarendon College winning it by more than two goals because you suspect that organization that you got from McGraw up to this 70th minute, you're not going to see a lot of that. They're going to have to commit more forward. And that's going to open space for Clarendon College. Well, told you it was nil all at halftime in the semi final last year, and they won 4 0 against Dintail. And you can see why, if they get the goals early, the opponent will have to chase, and in doing so, cannot sit back as much as they did. 11 players behind the ball here, no, it's not going to be much, do much for McGrath. 
It hasn't been electrifying from Clarendon College, but it has been efficient, or at least we can say that now. Good teams, they do find a way to win when they're not playing at their best. They're not allowed to play at their best. In this case, you have to give McGrath some credit that they did not allow Clarendon to play their free-flowing football. Can they make it this interesting, McGrath? And even to do that, it's going to be a difficult task for them. It would have worked a lot on the training ground in terms of this organization and shape. You felt a lot is put in it. And as such, we're going to have to come out of that mode. They're at number 16, Trevon Ogle. Coming onto the park, replacing Lamar Grant. More of that four changes we have there for McGrath. Still has not been able to influence the game the way they would have liked. McGregor. They just don't possess that quality up front, do they? Not at all, and they rely heavily on the defence, as we said earlier. A lot of game, I think, five games out of 11 early on in the season that they won, but a single goal to nil. Jadou. When they go forward, it looks awkward. Almost uncomfortable for them. Now, as I said before, a lot of work would have gone in this, this week or so that they had to prepare. And I suspect 90% of that preparation would have been about the shape, would have been about concentration and doing those stuff. And so to switch into that attacking mode might not have been a lot of work in that regard. Smart. Does well. Reed. Taken off him by Whitaker. Jadu wins a throw. So far in the game, smart, really the difference maker with those two goals. Oh, there's a neat ball slip through. Offside. Smart was there. I wonder if he felt he was onside. Just to go. Taking off him there by Granville. Clarendon College will be looking for more goals to close out this semi final. No doubt about it. And, and that play just now where you saw Smart and Granville finding themselves in that space where one ball played through and there were two Clarendon College players there looking to get on the end of it. You did not see a lot of that in the first half because McGraw was so organized, but like I said, with two goals down, they're really opening up a little bit more now to try and get back into this game. McGregor for Whitaker. Whitaker tries his luck from distance. Not mm -hmm. a bad effort either, just yeah, high and over the top, but I guess the intent is there. Intent was there indeed from Dineth Whitaker as the coach gets ready to make his fifth substitution. And what would be his final one? And Javain Morrison may be the young man coming on. And you feel it would be an attacking change there for McGrath. But Coach Thomas can give himself a lot of credit and the supporters, McGrath, not just what they've done to be here. Confirmation of the change. Kyle Collins, who had come on as a substitute in the 51st minute, now being substituted in the 75th. Not carrying out 
the task or the instructions were given, possibly maybe just sacrificing the player while he changes his intent. But as I was saying, Thomas can give himself a lot of credit during the semi-finals, first time on not the traditional school, but also on the day, really did well. You feel maybe just lacking in quality, McGrath, uh, to go with his tactical game plan, probably needed a little bit more quality. Without a doubt, without a doubt. Hasn't been for a lack of trying. And this Clarendon College team is filled with quality from the bench to the field. Throw for Dineth Whitaker. His high school footballing career coming to an end. But he's done so much for McGraw High, their number 12, Dineth Whitaker. A part of history, one that cannot be broken, being the first McGrath team to make it to the semi finals. So, a good season for him, nonetheless. Yeah, 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 yeah. CC coming forward again. How they could have let Lerman through there. Clarendon College still on the attack. Men inside the box. No joy for them on that occasion. And look at McGregor at this stage of the game, still running, still chasing. All in his own up front. Jovain Morrison onto the park. The final throw of the dice for Magrahai. Sixty one percent possession for Clarendon College now. They started the second half up at fifty four. They have taken control of this contest with an efficient second half performance so far. Yeah, you may expect that stat at that percentage to rise where possession is concerned for Clarendon College. Nothing earth shattering about it, but sometimes efficiency is all you need, especially on a night when your life is being made difficult by some great tactical awareness on the part of McGraw. But they are wearing them down. And Larman gets inside the box and Larman scores a beauty. Absolute beauty. Jalen Larman with his fifth and most gorgeous of the season. And Clarendon College are three clear. And sensing their third straight to Costa Cup final. Absolute beautiful from Larman. He showed purpose and pace and precision was on that strike. Lovely, lovely goal. And of all the goal you give that, that's the pick of the bunch so far. I say so far because Clarendon College certainly has more in them. But on the pressure cut inside, talk about precision. There's no way Robinson was getting to that. When you have quality, you can turn it on at any time. Larman just did. What a goal. There was purpose there in that run. And certainly an end product to match. A solo goal. And you see those goals at the highest level. And you lament over it and you, you glorify them at this level. At any level, that's a beautiful goal. Well, the Clarendon College supporters said it would be 3-0. It is now 3-0. They could add more. 
once the second goal went in, or much as the first you felt that was going to be it because Ghana would have to come out and play. And we've seen a lot more space in the second half than we've seen in the entire first half. Plus, of course, weary legs. Reed. Right with that, Ricardo, they would have covered a lot of ground. Almost every blade of grass here on this field. You feel McGraw would have trampled on at some point in time or a play on the field. That's how much they've worked here today. The persons always say football is a talent sport. And when you have good talent in your team, beautiful attack will, will unlock even the most organized defense. We saw that there in Lahman's goal. Well, can they make something of this and get something out of this semi-final? Shot from distance. Wide of the target. Maybe he had a little bit more space to work with. Or maybe he didn't. He didn't get a good connection with it there. He came off closer to the toe end of his foot there. Um, Gale, the substitute coming on. A rare attempt at goal for... McGrath, Dan De Gill, the 35th minute substitute with an 80 second minute shot. Confirmation of Jalen Larman's goal. Goal. Fourth of the season. Good strike there from McGregor. And you know he hit them with power. Took the deflection there. It was Williams. So gee, Williams that got in the way of that one. But we can watch Larman. Larman's goal over and over. Real delight to watch. McGraw now. Just wouldn't mind time passing quickly. Corner kick. Howell. Chambers looking to slip it forward. It's a good ball inside, just plays ahead of him, not on the same wavelength. He found the gap and he threaded that one through. just too much on that pass and Larman is ready to run into that half space maybe the semi-final Clarendon College would have been looking for just enough to keep them sharp for the remainder of the season but not enough to seriously trouble them as they get ready to make another substitution He's come on, he's looked goalwards.
So a couple of changes made by Clarendon College, Raheem Christian sporting the number 20 jersey and Zakia Wilkes in the number 13, both on the park. Andre Nicholson, the number nine, who will be getting a run out as well. He replaces Roderick Granville. And Coach Hyde, seemingly, he knows he has this one in the bag. And so, giving a rest to some more fancied starters. Uh, maybe with one eye now on the Champions Cup semi-finals. That Champions Cup semi-final against Cornwall College to be on Saturday will be a fine one. So Earl Simpson is off as well and Fletcher Colin Fletcher is on. So that Champions Cup final you speak of, repeat of last year's Costa Cup final. And still the possibility that it could also be this year's the Costa Cup final. It certainly is because Cornwall College is being installed as favourite against a dentil in the game to come after this one free kick for McCraw they still want a glory ending to their campaign in all game long we felt that this was the this was the type of situation that would give them the best opportunity to get into this game Peter McGregor now Clarendon College with the opportunity to break Has taken them a little while, but they are on their way. I have to give McGregor credit there. He took a free kick, not the best, but he tracked back so well. He made the first interception in that situation to try and slow this fast break from Clarendon College. With just under two minutes and by the time the referee Davy feel to had to this encounter. Clarendon College seemingly have this one in the bag for sure. They would have to give up more than half the goals conceded all season in the shortest possible time. McGrath here and we haven't seen anything from McGrath to suggest that they have that in them but take nothing away from their display especially in the first half and for the entire season McGrath have really done themselves and their community and their school so proud this season Is there one more to be had for the champions? From distance! Oh, that had the goalkeeper interested. Well, had all his attention there that was hit with a lot of venom and he struck that one sweetly I mean, just look at that the lace of the boot Nicholson really with the fresh legs on everything was behind that looking to top Larman's goal that strike 
It would take something spectacular to top that one. Three minutes of time to be added on. Yellow card, second of the game. Which have gone to Williams. So both yellow cards going to Clarendon College. First one went to Stunart in the 37th minute. Kevin Sharp gets a run out. Thought they had already made five changes. That one is over the top. Just a matter of passing time now. Clarendon College looking at a third straight Da Costa Cup final. Omar Reed, the man who got the yellow card, confirmation of that. Very effective display here from Clarendon College. They showed patience when they needed to. They stepped up the pace when they had to early in that second half. Before McGrath could settle, they found themselves a goal behind. And uh, Clarendon College didn't look back from there. They just kept, get, kept getting better and better. And Smart certainly has put on a man of the match performance. Got two goals. Larman not to be undone, scoring the goal of the game. A solo effort, a work of heart. Jadu trying to stop Chambers does well, does very well. Otherwise, it may well have been 4 0. We are in the closing seconds of this Da Costa Cup semi final. I feel this is the last action of the game. There it is. There is the final whistle. Just another day at the office. 711 days and counting. Clarendon College are still unbeaten. 40 wins from 41 matches since that last defeat in the 2017 final. They are into their third straight. And for the second year in a row, they are on course to win the title without losing a single match. That man has done brilliantly for McGraw High. He won three points at Champs in the 2000 steeplechase for them a year ago. That was their only points. He's held them to the semi-finals here. They have performed well. A strong first half performance, unable to maintain it in the second. The experience of Lenworth High, the quality of Clarendon College, showing and coming through they win by three goals to nil and advance to the Issa Water the Costa Cup final for 2019. Let's have a look at the goals that decided this match. It started in the 47th minute. Larman with the free kick, the keeper not handling it well and Sheldon Smart stepping up to turn it in for one nil. Smart reacted quickest to that miss by the goalkeeper, mishandling by the goalkeeper, should have done better. Smart, quick, and a decent finish from him. So often we see that go over the top, got over it, and that was the floodgates pretty much open for Clarendon. Definitely a mistake made by the keeper then in the 69th minute. Omar Reed with the cross and a delightful finish. 
coming from Smart. His 13th goal of the campaign was a beauty to watch. But again, you have to question the effectiveness of the goalkeeper. He was a bit off his line, but Smart met it so well. Beautiful ball into the box. Had curl, pace on it. Smart just redirected it. Absolutely beautiful cross. Then the goal of the game coming in the 79th minute. Jalen Larman picking the ball up, getting around one. Then a second, that was Whitaker and curling it around and over the goalkeeper. Wonderful goal, an absolute beauty from Jalen Larman. That was good night, sweet prince, Babai McGrath. That was a wizardry run from him and a kick to go with it, like his foot being a magic one there, guiding it right into the top corner. Jalen Larman with the final goal, Clarendon College with the final rights on McGrath. Confirmation of the statistics, 10 shots on target, 10 shots for Clarendon College, 8 of them on target, 7 shots for McGrath, 4 on target, 7 falls committed by Clarendon College, 6 by McGrath, 2 yellow cards, both going to Clarendon College players. No red cards in the contest, 3 corners for McGrath, 5 for Clarendon College, 6 saves by the McGrath goalkeeper, just 1 for the Clarendon College goalkeeper, and at the end of it, Clarendon College, as expected, bossing possession, 63% to 37 on the part of McGrath. Well tried McGrath, Clarendon College, the champions though, have shown their worth, have shown their quality, and they are through to the Da Costa Cup final with a 3-0 victory. Shetland Smart, man of the match for his two goals. And he seems quite happy, and so does his coach. So he came up with the brace today for Clarendon College. Sheldon Smart is the MVP. Congratulations on your performance today. How do you feel? I feel great. How do you feel after knowing that the first half was a difficult half and you came back, you scored two to kind of get uh, Clarendon College comfortable? 